and welcome to Santa Cruz, California, the 2012 Labor Day Ultimate Championships. Here we are in finals. Seattle Sockeye, universe point win over Revolver. They took that game 15 to 14, and if you were watching, you just saw Johnny Bravo take down double wide in a universe game win 15 to 14. Both these teams played each other yesterday coming out of the A pool. Sockeye got the better half of Bravo, but as we've heard, it is so hard to beat a team twice in a tournament. Jackson, what kind of changes do you think we're going to see Bravo do? Changes? Well, they have been, or er, Sockeye yesterday moved it a lot with their handlers, lots of quick small movement, lots of whirl and swirl. Yesterday, squirrely movement, lots of touches per point. Probably gonna be tightening down a bit more on the handlers. Talking with Matt Rader before the game, he said Carl Danny Karlinski has been streaking deep a lot from that position. Be very interesting to see how Bravo adjusts. Well, Bravo is starting on defense, so we'll get to see what Danny Karlinski does in the first point. Offensive line for Sakai, Kosednar, Wallace, Karlinski, Holt, Caldwell, Vero Titcomb, and Matt Rader. Holt brings it down. Right away to Karlinski. Flood play. Up to Wallace, back to Karlinski. Karlinski dumps to Wallace. Up the field to Mike Caldwell. Caldwell pumps the backhand huck. Puts it to Matt Rader. Rader guarded by Austin Gregerson. Dumps to Holt. Holt in the middle of the field, just past midfield. Karlinski with it now, marked by Salvia. To Wallace. Wallace around to Vero Titcomb. Barrow Titcomb, inside break to Mike Caldwell, and Sakai scores the first point of the finals. Very quick movement from Sakai. Nobody had the disc past all five. And really break heavy in that red zone. The only time that anyone had the disc late or higher in the stall count was when Caldwell pumped a forehand and then Raider came in off that cut and gained 25 yards. Classic Sakai deep cutting. As we talked about last game, Jack McShane injured right now. A big player for Johnny Bravo. We saw in the next gen game, him throwing many forehand hucks for breaks. He anchors that D-line. Last year he played offense. Right now he is cleatless. Johnny Bravo's offense. Clore, Westbrook, Ream, Fer Farrell, Ackley, Mickle, and Krug. Watching that last game. First, first motion from Bravo, generally was Ackley with the disc in the middle of the field, Mickle in the lane. First two points last game, Mickle streaked deep. Was able to catch it twice over Jake Anderson. This time Farrell takes it in the middle of the field, marked by Eddie Feely. Sakai, a little 3-3-1 three, three, to stop that first play. Man on the handlers. A nice wall, and Josh Ackley going deep. Sam Harkness elevates and gets it deep. That throw a little low coming from Ackley. Harkness up the line to Reed Koss. Two times yesterday we saw Reed Koss immediately off a turn throw for the end zone. And here he puts it to Frank Barrick. Works out, Barrick to Joe Sefton, Sockeye scores, gets the first break of the game. 
Chomp, chomp, chomp. Blood is in the water. Sockeye up 2-0. Yeah, both teams, especially on defense, are going to want to rely on the deep game, open up the field, get lots of yards, and take advantage of an offense with their head down. Bravo's offense in that last game really taken out of their comfort zone, having to play a lot of short ball, not getting into that deep look that they're comfortable with. That time they're really look like they're trying to force the deep look. Josh Ackley reaching out for a backhand. And Sakai taking advantage of it, working downfield and getting the first break of the game. O line for Bravo. Bishop Westbrook, Ackley, Farrell, Krug, Mickle, Ream. Low pull, fielded by Pharrell. Center to Ackley. Sockeye in that zone again. Looking for Mickle in the lane. Mickle marked by Sefton. Sockeye now in a man set. Ream with it on the sideline, marked by Speedle. Excuse me, Jacob Spidel. Dumps to Mickle. Ackley with it. Swung across to Parker Krug. Low throw from Jimmy Mickle quite elevate. Looks like he might have slipped a little when he jumped. Yeah, he had to go up early to get that disc. Feet came out from under him and just wasn't able to go up as strong as he wanted to. Certainly a catchable disc. But again, it seemed Bravo is forcing the deep look and it resulted in a turn. Kinley with it to Koss. Pick called. Josh Ackley bulldozing over X10 Titcomb. Tyler Kenley with the disc. Tyler Kenley goes deep. It's floating in front of Joe Sefton, but runs out of the line. Can't get it. Ryan Farrell picks it up quickly, trying to get the offense moving. Upfield, inside out, break to Westbrook. Almost a D from Skip Sewell. Swung across to Ream. Ream marked by Spidel. Ream dumps to Ackley. Ackley finds wide open Westbrook, marked by Sefton. A lot of pressure on that mark, and is that Skip Sewell? We have an injury on the field. Ryan Farrell's cramping up. He immediately sits down, starts stretching. Heads up D from Skip Sewell. Westbrook helps him up. Ryan Farrell was playing a lot of points in the Bravo double wide game on offense working really hard to get his team here in finals. Pharrell, the captain for Johnny Bravo. Jake Juzak subs in for Ryan Pharrell and Sam Harkness subs in for Skip Sewell. Disc is live, players are now allowed to move around. Harkness picks up, marked by Juzak. Harkness to Sefton. Sakai takes the early 3-0 lead. Bravo coming, Bravo coming out a little flat. Looks like they're forcing the disc. Yeah, I was talking with Captain Ryan Farrell before the game. Oh, it looks like Johnny Bravo is going to take a timeout. I'll hold my comments until we come back from the timeout. Let these teams talk about what they need to adjust. And we'll be back in just a minute. 
Welcome back to the finals matchup of Sakai versus Bravo. Sakai scoring the first offensive point, two breaks, and Bravo takes a timeout. I was talking with Captain Ryan Farrell before the game, asking him what kind of adjustments they were making since they've already played Sakai in this tournament. He specifically noted he specifically noted the zone junk defense that Sakai was throwing to take away their first cut. They're going to try to make some adjustments to get around that. We are being told by our executive producer that he has put up a high quality stream. So if you folks watching at home want to refresh your browser, you might find that option to get the better viewing experience here for the finals game. Line for Bravo. We have Krug, Mickel, Ream, Westbrook, Ackley, and Clore. D line for Seattle. It's Koss, Silva, Spidal, Lennon, Duncan Lynn, Maddie Zemmel, and Eddie Feely. Here we see that junk from Sakai taking away the first play from Johnny Bravo. Krug with it, marked by Lennon. Up line to Ackley, marked by Lynn. Up the field to Ream, Ream with the backhand fake. Jacob Spidal with it, Jacob Spidal with the foot block. Foul called. Ream out of Kansas. Indiana. Indiana. Spidal out of Stanford. Sakai now in man. And a travel being called. Sidelines are telling Jacob Spidal it wasn't a travel, and on the replay, it looks clean. Krug will keep the disc, continues to Westbrook. Inside break from Krug to Ackley. Ackley putting up the backhand to Jimmy Mickle. Reed Koss not quite. Called not in. Did Reed Koss just call a stall? That was the fastest 10 seconds I've ever heard if he did. Clearly some discussion about whether or not he was in. Mikkel thought he was in. Koss elects to stall him the whole time they're trying to decide. That is one of the gray areas in the rules that I really just don't know about. Mikkel has the disc. Pops. Oh. And finds wow. Evan Padgett. Padgett. Spikes viciously. Lee Koss almost gets that. And Paget collects. And Maddie Zemmel to Spidal. And Paget spikes it right on Zemmel. Paget and Zemmel had to have shared the field at Mama Bird. Oh, yeah, definitely. 2010, 2009. I believe Evan Paget graduated in 2010. During the timeout, we got into the huddle of Johnny Bravo, trying to hear what is inside the comeback kids. Sides condensed and hard out, hard in, flare, hard out, hard in, flare. Right, this is the time we have to have that discipline, every single cut. Captain Jack McShane, not in this game, but still heavily invested in his team letting them know to get back to the basics of their cutting. Seemed to have worked for Bravo out of that offensive point as they're able to punch one in. Now on defense, down 3-1. Juzak with the pull. Holt fields it. 
in the middle to Karlinski. Karlinski to Raider. Raider with movement up line to Holt. Holt dumps to Karlinski. Up line to Nate Casting, his first point of the game. First throw of the game to Phil Murray. Goal, Phil Murray swimming and swimming. <laughs> Some excited sockeye play out there. Casting with the low backhand, Phil Murray tries to stay on his feet. <laughs> it's all about making it look natural if you're falling down. It's true. Sakai, no trouble on their offensive points. Sakai looks fast out there. On both offense and defense, they're putting a lot of pressure on Bravo. Phil Murray always in high spirits. One of the more entertaining players to watch. Of course, last year he played on Next Gen, and it's Inaugural year. O line for Bravo, Clore, Reem, Ackley, Paget, Mickel, Krug, and Westbrook. Paget seems to have taken over the spot of Ryan Farrell. Farrell still cramping a, a bit. Cost to pull for Sockeye. That pull sails out of bounds. Josh Ackley bringing the disc to the brick mark. Man on the handlers, three man wall downfield. And Reed Koss sitting deep. Ackley to Mickle, excuse me, Ackley to Mickle. Mickle scores a one throw goal from Bravo. That's easy. Yeah, that is an offensive point that Bravo needs. Get their confidence back. And Josh Ackley, what a throw. Finding the space in the deep. Behind the wall, away from the deep, deep. Cost positioning himself on the dead side. On the dead side, deep. Well, it seemed that Ackley did a little shake and bake to throw that flick. It could have been a break throw. But Sakai up 4-2. Bravo finally gets a smooth offensive point. Their defense, though, has been unable to stop the fast-moving Sockeye offense. Sockeye's got to be excited after beating Revolver. Their first time beating them since 2010 ECC. They've had a couple double-game point losses to them last year at Northwest Regionals. Riding their emotions into the finals. Holt to Kosednar. Kosednar with the flick to Holt. Streaking deep from the handler position. And a doink from Holt. A gift rarely, for Johnny Bravo. Rarely do you see that from Holt. He's a sure-handed player. Getting a lot of touches for Sockeye. Now Gregerson picks up. Marked by Titcomb. Gregerson dumps to Forshee. Again to Gregerson. And Gregerson rips a backhand to Josh Anderson, marked by Spencer Wallace. Anderson to uh, Randy Richels. Richels? Randy Richels. Gets a goal for a break for Bravo. They only trail by one now. 
That was a very impressive throw. I thought that was going to sink away and fall out of the sideline, but it just hung right in front of Josh Anderson. A big windup from Gregerson. And that's the classic Bravo offense of a turn. That's what they needed. The offense head was down. They were able to take advantage of a deep shot, and they bring themselves right back into this game. Bravo's record this year, an impressive 20 and one. Their only loss all year long to Sockeye was yesterday. They lost 13-11. Jimmy Mickle with the pull. Now back on the D-line, fielded by Castine, up to Karlinski. Karlinski gets it up to Raider, and Raider, oh, backhand to Phil Murray. Anderson is there, and Phil Murray goes up early. He seems, he's calling a foul on Josh Anderson. Looks like he's not trying to accuse anyone of anything. He's just calling foul. Definitely some discussion. It seems that Phil Murray had gone up without contact. Josh Anderson came into him in the air. And a contested foul call. It's going to go back to Matt Rader. So the disc back at Raider. Sakai will keep possession. Defenders are coming back. Raider marked by Gregerson. Murray still deep in the lane. Raider moves it to Castine. Castine inside breaks Karlinski. Karlinski the flat backhand to Phil Murray, that time it works. No foul. Phil Murray with his second goal of this championship final. Josh Anderson can't close the distance. Sakai up 5-3 on Bravo. That foul call really brings up kind of one of the important debates that's going on in Ultimate today. What's that, Topher? Well, the fact that this game doesn't have observers, the disc goes back. With an observer at this game, that is going to be called a foul or not a foul. There's no indecisiveness. Really something that I know for myself makes Ultimate a little bit difficult to watch. Observers, not only good for speeding up the game, keeping time, but also on plays like this when players just really aren't going to reach a conclusion, there can be a definitive call, and we can see play resume instead of going back. We saw it in the last game, too, on the greatest attempt from double wide. It went back. It reset the play. Also, in the first game of the day, with Rhino, Jacob Jannon towing the line, disc went back. Also, Kieran Thomas down on that same point, towed the line. Both times, double wide, won that argument. Back to the action. Ackley with it in the middle. Ackley to Westbrook. Sockeye staying in that zone. Now they're trailing Sockeye. Reem is there, and Reed Koss Reed making up the Koss. ground. That disc floats just a little too much. Put a little more blade on that, and it's right in Reem's breadbasket. Instead, Reed Koss able to close the gap, get a hand on it. Play, 
Sockeye looking to break for the third time in this first half. Harkness brings it to the line. Vertical stack, calling them to the side. Kinley now out there. Barrick with it to Kinley. Up the line to Barrick. Barrick puts it right away to Exton Titcom. Too far. Looks like Jackson Clore would have been there to make a play on it. Bravo. Dodges the break bid from Sockeye. Ackley will pick up. Sockeye stays in man defense. They don't want to be in their zone. Nickel, big gainer to Westbrook. Dumps to Ackley, around to Mickle. Durst streaking deep. However, Sam Harkness called pick. They close the gap. Reed Koss on the mark. Jimmy Mickle with it. Exton Titcomb has his head up in D's. Harkness moving the disc quickly to Koss. Koss not wasting any time. Puts it to Sefton and Richter oh. with an enormous bid, but BJ Joe Sefton. Josh Ackley still on the ground. He might have come in contact with Joe Sefton. As Joe Sefton He's lays out. Ackley's up. He's all right. That's a highlight reel right there. Oh, boy. Jeez, we're getting a lot of big plays down in that end zone today. Great play from Joe Sefton, a.k.a. Phil Murray's brother, but not really. <laughs> Almost identical twins. Brothers from another mother. <laughs> Both players coming from the University of Washington. And then Cost. making a big splash on the club Jeez. scene. It just looked like it hurt. Very athletic play from both players. Actually almost got that. Sakai, three breaks in the first half. They're up 6-3 on Bravo. Bravo looking to avenge that loss from yesterday. The loss that broke their perfect season. Still an impressive record at 20 and one. O-line for Bravo, Krug, Reem, Ackley. Ryan Farrell back from his, his legs cramping up. Padgett, Clark Bishop, and Juzak. Jimmy Mickle taking a sub. First time we've seen him not in on offense. Now Krug with it. Marked by Lennon. Back to Ackley. Ackley putting a back in to Juzak. Juzak's there. And bodies are flying. Maddie Zemmel there for the D. Reed Koss picks up. He'll be marked by Jesse Ream. Sakai already up three breaks. Opportunity to make it four. Silva with it to Koss. Dumps to Feely. Nearly a D from Parker Krug. Now Lennon to Lynn. We have a pit call in the stack. It will remain with Duncan Lynn, first year player on the team out of University of Washington. Marked by Ryan Farrell. Travel called on the throw, Farrell calling that travel. In the middle of the stack, the front of the stack, you can see number 21 on Bravo and number 17 on Sockeye. That is Evan Paget and Maddie Zimmel. 
two former Mama Bird players. Both of them, in fact, are wearing Mama Bird sweat headbands. Earlier in the game, Padgett scored and spiked it almost on Semmel's head. And the deep shot to Reed Koss. Sockeye, they are chomping right now. Up 7-3. Get another look at this D. Bodies are flying. Eddie Feely rips a backhand to Reed Koss. Open by 10 yards, no problem there. And Sakai at seven to three. Last year in the finals was Revolver taking on Chain. Not really a very competitive game. Revolver ran away with that one, 15-6. However, this year Revolver couldn't make it to the finals as Sakai beat them on double game point, 15-14. Same score of Bravo and Double Wide, 15-14. Bravo obviously beating Double Wide. Bravo very happy to defend their number two spot in the USA Ultimate Rankings. In women's action, we have Riot taking on Fury. Fury up in that game, 6-5. Not surprising to hear those two teams in the finals. Now Ackley with it. Finds Reem on the sidelines. Sakai in that zone. Reed up the line to Farrell. Marked by Kinley. Backhand to Clore. Nearly a D from Reed Koss. Up the line to Ackley. Ackley to Pharrell, he toes the line, almost straddles the line, but gets his first foot down. It's an impressive throw by Ackley. Pretty late. Mm -hmm. Pretty late, almost the entire flight was out of bounds with that outside in edge coming back into the field. And great job by Ryan Pharrell to attack the disc from inbounds and still keep his feet in bounds. Sakai at 7-4, an offensive possession to take them into half. Johnny Bravo needs a turn to get themselves back into this game before Sakai is able to run away with it. On the field for Bravo defense, Juzak, Mickle, Gregerson, Henry Conker, Tim Morrissey, Clark Bishop, and Craig Forshee. Jimmy Mickle set to pull downwind. The wind has shifted from what we had in the last game. Not a very strong wind. On the line for Sockeye. Wallace, Tickham, Holt, T. Ray, Raider, Caldwell, and Kosednar. Karlinski picks up. It's Kosednar up the line. Kosednar putting it right away to Matt Raider. Matt Raider. Fully striding it out, tracking that one down low, throw. Raider with his big long strides, hops into the end zone. He's happy, Sakai takes half, 8-4. Not messing around, the fish are feeling it. That's the first half of this championship final. We will also be taking a half. Be back here for the second half in just a few minutes.
Welcome back to the Sockeye versus Johnny Bravo finals of the Labor Day Championship here in Santa Cruz, California. Both teams coming off of a semifinals universe point win. And both teams out of pool A have already played each other earlier in this tournament. Sakai looking very fresh at the beginning of the game. And Johnny Bravo having a little bit trouble adjusting to the speed. They are down eight to four. Zemmel with the pull for Sakai. Durst to Krug. Ooh, looks like an elbow to the face of Eddie Feely. Could hear the grunt over here. Get another look here. Oh, it was a disc right across the face. Got a trainer going out to him. Feely standing up. And he's going to take a sub off the field. Allie Lennon subs in for him. Padgett with it on the sidelines. Marked by Zemmel, now to Ackley. Ackley the around throw to Mickle. Mickle throwing a blade to Durst. Durst catching it in the end zone. Bravo converts their first O point out of half. Nice to see them convert. Stay in this game. They only trail by three now. During halftime, we were able to get a little bit of the huddle from Sokka. For everyone else, if we're on the sideline, do it. you are talking yes. to someone. Hell yeah. If you're on yes. the field, you are working your fucking ass off because the other people aren't on the field. Yep. Yep. It's your turn. Yep. All right? Yeah! Yeah! Captain Nate Castine. Certainly a fiery speech. Talking about picking up your teammates, staying in it. They only have one more half to close out this tournament. Winning Labor Day be a big confidence boost headed into regionals. The last tournament before the series begins. O-line for Sakai, Murray, Holt, Raider, Karlinski, Caldwell, Wallace, Kosednar. Juzak with the pull. Holt catches, centers to Kosednar. Kosednar playing his college days at Carleton. Over to Karlinski out of Santa Cruz. Karlinski, also the tournament's director. One of the tournament director. Karlinski found Raider. There was a pick call downfield. Karlinski's third consecutive year as a tournament director. Now Raider to Caldwell, to Wallace. Spencer Wallace is wide open in the end zone. Fairly easy O point, not too much pressure there from Bravo. Bravo looking a little tired. Yeah, Ryan Farrell was guarding Spencer Wallace there, and you gotta wonder how much energy he has left in the tank. Took an injury sub earlier in this game. His muscles were cramping up. Checked over with Fury. 
during halftime. Fury was up 7-5 on Riot. The finals broadcast here on the Next Gen Network is brought to you with the help of our sponsor, Elemental Technology. <laughs> Elemental Technology has been working with the Next Gen Network since they started at College Stanford. They've been wonderful partners and wonderful help in getting some great ultimate to you, the viewers at home. Sakai currently up nine to five. Pull coming from Reed Koss. Rug takes it down, centers to Ackley. Ackley over to Paget. Paget to Westbrook. Travel called on the throw from Paget, marked by Exton Titcomb. Patches to Westbrook. Westbrook dumps to Ackley. Ackley to, with a gainer up the sideline to Reem, back to Ackley. Guarded by Duncan Lynn in the middle with Westbrook. Westbrook throwing a deep backhand to Jimmy Mickle. Jacob Spidel there. Looks like we have a foul called on the initial attempt. Oh yeah, Mickle got clocked right in the head. <laughs> Almost was able to bring that one in it's on the second attempt. No contest from Spidel. Mickle with it on the goal line. Mickle burns a timeout. Early timeout in this half for Bravo. With only one per half, it's interesting that they use it now, but wanting to punch it in. They take a timeout, and we're going to take a timeout also. We'll be back in just a minute. We are back here in Santa Cruz. Johnny Bravo taking the timeout on the goal line. Jimmy Mickle trying to punch in an offensive point. As the Sakai defense gets set on the field, Jacob Spidel will tap it in. Iso with Evan Padgett dumped to Ackley. Padgett still in the middle. Three players on the back end zone line. Wow. Exton Tickham with the hand block on Ackley. Then Kinley to Lynn. Moving quickly, Silva Harkness. Harkness to Kinley. Kinley marked by Krug. Travel called. Kinley with it. Now Exton, Jimmy Mickle elevates and gets a D. And Reed Whoa. Koss comes down with it, burns a time out. Reem saying he got to three. Great Lots play of exciting from Jimmy stuff Mickle. there. Yeah. Low huck, Jimmy Mickle able to knock it up. But Reed Koss climbing the ladder, and we are going to go into our commercial timeout on this timeout. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Back on the field, Reed Koss in possession with the disc. Ten yards outside his end zone. Goes around to Duncan Lynn, and Duncan Lynn jumps into the end zone. An exciting point, last point for both sides. Bravo calling the timeout as they're about to score. And then a big point block from Exton Titcom. Almost looks like they're playing flutter guts out there. And as Exton goes for the huck, Jimmy Mickle knocking it away, but Reed Koss getting up in the pack. 
getting the disc. And Sakai is able to punch it in. Another break for them. Sakai is looking good. They look loose out there. Bravo. Maybe a little concerned here in the second game. And you can really tell the differences between the two teams just from the way that they're behaving on the field. We see when Sakai scores, they're feeling nice and loose, having a lot of fun. As BJ or Phil, I never know which one or both of them are just. And skip, swan dive over Phil. But then for Bravo, <laughs> Evan Padgett. Like angry spike on his former Colorado Mama Bird teammate. Maddie Zemmel. Update from the women's finals. Fury took half, but Riot is able to battle back. It's now 8-8 over on the women's field. Back in our action, Krug with it. To Durst, back to Krug, to Ream. Ream getting up. Snatching that out of the air. Disc is going back to Parker Krug. Uh, would have to be a travel then. Either travel or an offensive foul. It's coming in on stall three, so it sounds like a travel. To Ackley, marked by Sewell. Ackley to Clark Bishop. Back to Ackley. Up to Westbrook. To Ream, to Ackley. Ackley, hammer to Ream, just outside the end zone. Unmarked, free throws. Now he has a mark to Ackley. Ackley to Durst. Durst looking for a dump. Durst just off the hands of Mickel. Joe Sefton with a layout D. Sakai gets it, they're working it up the field. And Frank Barrick, bit of a miscue on that one. He had a player streaking deep. It's not really the execution you're going for right there. Now, I don't know why Joe Sefton stopped running. He had plenty of space up there. Nice D from Sefton. But Bravo, very fortunate to have this disc back. Sakai continuing to get Ds on Bravo. You wonder if fatigue is setting in. Ackley with it on the sideline, marked by Sefton. At midfield with Mickel. Mickel marked by Koss, back to Ackley. You can see the players are tired here. Westbrook just past midfield. A round flick to Ream. Ream seemed to be, seeming to be open all point long. Back to Ackley. High release flick to Jimmy Mickel. Snatches it over the diving Koss. Mickle dumps to Krug. Krug stumbling. Travel called by Barrett coming in stall two. Laser hammer. Tipped by Skip Sewell, but still Joe makes it to Joe Durst. Durst. Durst out of Lewis and Clark. That was on a line. In baseball. That would be a frozen rope right there. Low and hard. Almost another D from Sakai. They really are taking this game from Bravo. Bravo able to convert that O point, but not without a few turns. A lot of difficulty for the Bravo offense to score. While the Sakai offense just looks so smooth. We've seen, we said before, when these two teams were playing each other in pool play, this is a rematch of a club championship final in 2007. A very different personnel from both sides, but still two programs looking to get back to the top of the club championships. 
Update from the women's field. Fury leads 9-8. Riot has the disc. Karlinski with it, marked by Salvia. Foul called, no contest, coming in on zero. Sakai in a horizontal set. Holt back. Kasednar also back. Swung over to Castine. Castine looking for a deep shot. Dumps to Karlinski to Raider. Raider putting it up to Castine. Here we go. Ow. Nate takes an awkward tumble. Calling the foul on Jeff Cohey. Cohey coming from behind. Looks like if there was contact, Cohey had hit the disc before. Castine revokes the foul call, looking to his players. Now Pharrell brings it to the line. He'll be marked by Danny Karlinski. Karlinski played a pivotal role in University of Santa Cruz, University of California Santa Cruz's return to the college national championships. Back when Cassidy Rasmussen was a freshman, won freshman of the year that year. And Morrissey up the line to Forshi. Forshi with the blade. Unintentional blade to Jake Juzak. Juzak just outside the end zone. Dumps to Forshi. Pharrell swinging around to Gregerson. Back to Pharrell, 15 yards out. Push pass to Gregerson. Gregerson inside, flick to Tim Morrissey. There's a goal for Bravo. That's a break. First one of the game, I believe. For Bravo? I think they got a few breaks in the first half. It's the first a one of the second half. One, if not two. I don't know about that, Topher. Well, anyways, first break of the second half. They cut the lead. Sockeyes lead to three. Still hanging around, showing they are not done. They do not want to give up. Yeah, certainly not too late in the game and not too big of a lead to overcome. Riot scoring that point, ties it at nines. Wholesale's out of bounds, Fury will take it at the brick. One change from Sockeye's, or two changes from Sockeye's O-line. Phil Murray is now in there, along with Vero Titcomb. Subbing out is Mike Caldwell. And I think Spencer Wallace. I think Spencer Wallace. It's a good bet. Jimmy Mickle on the D-line for Bravo. Set to pull. Mickle known for his awesome pulls. There's one right there. High and floaty is defense. Getting a chance to set up. Karlinski picks up middle of the end zone. Fires a flick to Vero. Phil Murray, seven yards on the in cut. Dumps to Castine. Castine over the head of Karlinski. Fortunate for Sakai. Goes Sednar to Karlinski. Karlinski putting it up. <laughs> Phil Murray. The most exciting player to watch. Gets the disc over Clark Bishop. Sakai pretty fortunate to even keep possession. Is that disc Sails over Karlinski's head and then Karlinski gets it immediately. Phil Murray looks like he was hacked pretty hard. He's fired up. Trying to bust out the old straight leg stomp. Sporting the Jordan cleats. Phil Murray. Gotta love watching that guy. Fury just scored to take the lead 10-9 on Riot. O-line for Bravo. We have Paget, Reem, Durst, Mickle, Westbrook, Ackley, Krug.
the disc just seems to be falling Sakai's way today, especially on that last point. Chance for Bravo to get a D. It pops right over Karlinski's head. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of miscues from Sakai. They've been playing a very clean game on offense. Very tight on defense, forcing a lot of turns. Not many unforced arrows from Bravi. Here's Krug with it, marked by Lynn. Krug to Westbrook, marked by Sefton. Low backhand to Ackley. Ackley marked by Koss. Padgett, Krug. Krug with the blade to Mickle. 30 yards off the field. Up line to Krug. Krug with the back end to Evan Padgett. Padgett, three costs almost with the D. Bravo converts their O point fairly easily. No deep shots, but definitely some long gainers. Sakai close on a couple. Unable to D it. Johnny Bravo at 8-11 on defense. Talking it out on the line. They've got a lot of fire under themselves somehow. Sakai's offense has been looking very smooth in that vertical stack. We are slowly seeing the return of the vertical stack in the club ultimate scene. Vertical stack tends to be put on a sideline or shading to one side to create 30 yards of space to cut in instead of 20 yards. That way you also don't have the offside defenders able to help out deep. Just have the deepest guy if you can get it past him. It's a lot of real estate to throw to. Jimmy Mickle with the pull for Bravo. Mickle putting in a lot of points here at the end. Got the next gen tour. There goes Randy Riggles. Richels almost a D on that first throw. Sednar streaking. Holt with it to Caldwell. Caldwell around to Kosednar, back from that deep cut, puts a blade to Adam Holt, almost. Juzak picks up, marked by Vero Titcomb. Big wind up, elects to dump Gregerson. Mickle, 30 yards. Inside to Clark Bishop. Bishop again up the field. To Belshine. Belshine marked by Caldwell. Belshine dumps to Gregerson. Gregerson, a part of that Arizona team that featured Kirshner. And at timeout, called by Johnny Bravo. We're going to see how this plays out because, as is our understanding here in the booth, teams are only allowed one timeout per half. And Johnny Bravo has already taken their time out this half. Skip Sewell coming onto the field, telling the team it is a turnover. The guy you want to talk to here is Danny Karlinski. If there's a one timeout per half and a floater. Looks like Karlinski and Farrell are talking. Waiting to see what the call is. So they're not great spirit from Sakai. They're not going to count it as a turn, probably because confusion whether it's one timeout per half or and a floater or just one timeout. Generally, there's one timeout per half and a floater. Yep. Hence Some, the confusion. Sometimes two timeouts per half. Jimmy Mickle leading the next gen tour in timeout calls. Oh. Henry Conker almost able to get the disc on an athletic play. Sednar picks up. He anchored that Carlton 2009 championship team. Now he's doing it for Sakai to Titcomb. 
to Holt, marked by Clark Bishop. Backhand to Karlinski to Holt. Holt with the flick to Kosednar. Kosednar throws the D. Kosednar with two missed throws in this point. Missing Holt deep. And there, it's throwing inside Mike Caldwell. It's Vidalsheim with the D. Now Richels with it. Gregerson. Big thrower. Now Mickle. Marked by Wallace. And Jimmy Mickle. Doesn't step Four around. Execution. That one gets thrown straight into the ground. Sokka with a short field to work with. Fatigue seems to be setting in on both teams on their throws. Bravo wants to make a comeback. They can't make unforced errors like that. Karlinski inside break to Wallace. Wallace finds Barrow Titcomb. Sakai converts their O point, stops any sort of run from Bravo. They take the lead 12 8. Women's action. Fury up on Riot, 11-10. Fury will be on offense. Start the next point. O-line for Bravo. Durst, Clore, Paget, Westbrook, Ackley, Ream, Krug. Jimmy Mickle needing a sub, playing three consecutive points there. And they certainly weren't short points. A lot of turns on both sides. Lots of turns. If Bravo wants to come back in this game, they cannot have throwing mistakes like that from Jimmy Mickle. Really, any players. You've got to be tight on everything that you have to execute, those dump throws. Especially with giving Sakai a shorter field to work with. You like to see if there is a turnover, at least it, you want to force the other team to go the entire 70 yards. Now Sakai to pull Matty Miggs Zemmel, first year player on the team. Of course he played with Bravo. 09 and 010. Westbrook nearly deep by Zemmel. Westbrook cross field to Paget marked by Eddie Feely. Eddie Feely back from taking a Frisbee across the face. Now Westbrook puts it deep to Joe Durst. And Durst gets it over Barrick. Puts it out to space. Let's Durst run onto it. Barrick almost there. Durst using those gloves. That's the kind of player that can really fire up a D-line to come out, yeah. run strong. And at 12 to nine, Johnny Bravo getting into crunch time. Both teams in the pool A here at the Labor Day tournament. Had seven teams in their pool, so they played six games total. Games to 13, but still in close games and long games, it really wears on the body. Especially double, double game point games. You're playing the entirety of the time allotted, not allowing your players to rest at all. We have a cap, hard cap going on, soft cap going on in 17 minutes. O-line for Sakai, Wallace, Casting, Raider, Caldwell, Karlinski, Murray, and Kosednar. 
So Sednar takes down the pull. Sednar playing his youth days in Alaska. Rare to be a player coming from Alaska. There's Phil Murray up to Raider. Last year's next gen to this year's next gen. This goes up to Wallace. And Forshi snatches it away. Craig the Yeti Forshi out of Michigan State. Graduated in 06. Out of Gregerson. There was a pit call. The player stopped, but the player did the thrower did not recognize that there was a pit called. Hucked it downfield. His deep cutter. Unable to catch up as he stopped his momentum. Now Murray with it in the middle to the ageless Caldwell. Spencer Wallace, middle of the field, casting with it. Pit called. Disc will stay with Phil Murray. Murray really becoming a primary cutter for Sockeye. In 2010, he led Sockeye in goals scored. Murray to Karlinski. Up to Castine, around the Raider, and Sockeye scores, pushes their lead back to four. They take the lead 13-9. Bravo looking a little winded. Yeah, Bravo doing a good job making the play on defense. Craig Forshee getting up big over Spencer Wallace down in the end zone. But they have just had a tough time converting those defensive possessions. In an important game like this for the team to really step up to the elite level as they want to. They really want to break into that quarterfinal, that semifinals team at Nationals. It's some mistakes like that. You never that. know what can happen once the team gets the semis. Over in the women's final, Fury leads 12-10 on Riot. And Riot turns it over on the goal line. Fury looking to break, take their, push their lead to three, make it 13-10. Watching right now, Charmin to Sherwood. Reed Koss with the pull at 13 to nine. It is out of bounds. Parker Krug gonna take the disc up to the brick. Krug with it, a round break to Westbrook. Westbrook pumps, marked by Sefton. Pumps to Krug. Marked by Ali Lennon, player out of Western Washington. Now Mickle with it to Krug. Travel called. Parker Krug giving us the observer signals out there. <laughs> Nice throw upfield, leading Westbrook. Put up to Krug. Krug throwing his second hammer of this half to Jesse Ream. Jesse Ream plays hot potato. Scores a goal. Bravo getting to double digits. They still trail by three. See if they can force Sockeye to turn it over. Sockeye has rarely, rarely had many unforced errors. Bravo really needing to tighten it up. Certainly missing Jack McShane, an anchor for their D-line. Basically, they're every other on the when the D or when the D line gets a D and has it on offense. They're looking to run their offense through McShane. 
Yeah, certainly a player, as we've said, Bravo has struggled not to get the disc, but to convert the possessions. Spending a lot of their time early in the season relying on Jack McShane to run that offense. Update from the women's field. Fury converts that break opportunity and takes the lead 13-10. Interestingly enough, the same score as this game. Danny Karlinski brings it to the line. Karlinski marked by Clark Bishop. To Holt, to Karlinski. Farrell close. Holt to Karlinski, back to Holt. Lots of give and goes from these guys today. Handlers of Sakai, not scared to move it quickly. Very confident throws. Murray now with Karlinski in the middle. Karlinski to Wallace. Wallace to Murray. Murray putting the blade to Mike Caldwell. Sakai knocking on the door of a Labor Day Club Championship. Phil Murray just puts it out to space. No chance for Mickle to make a play. Caldwell signals it's good. Yeah, this is a great position for Seattle Sockeye to be in. They had a kind of up and down ECC, not losing any games that they weren't supposed to, but they really couldn't break any of the games and break seed of those teams. Might have been more practiced than them, who are projected to be a lot better than a team with a lot of new players. But Sakai coming into the Labor Day tournament, playing really well, and kind of getting the monkey off their back of beating Revolver. Sakai doesn't even have a full roster here as they're missing Simon Montague. Big player from Carlton. Played with the Fish last year, played next gen. Seems to be instant offense. Crazy break throws. <laughs> Speaking of crazy throws, there's a blade over the top to Reem. Ackley putting it to Evan Padgett. Kick spike. Bravo gets to 11. Ackley. Frank Barrett cannot, cannot close any gaps there. Back to Sakai missing Simon Montague. Last year on Next Gen, he mostly played offense. Had about 200 touches more than any other player. However, for Sakai, he plays defense. Very well at ECC. Don't really know his whereabouts this weekend, but they're not in Santa Cruz. Now Sakai their O-line out there, Wallace, Caldwell, Castine, Holt, Karlinski, Titcomb, Murray. Game point. Johnny Bravo defense. Not looking good for them. Starts out the point, pulling it out of bounds. Jimmy Mickle is not pleased with that. D-line for Bravo, Mickle, Juzak, Koki, Forshi, Gregerson, Salvia, and Belshine. Adam Holt in the center of the field. Moves it up to Caldwell. 
out of the horizontal stack. Quick up to Murray. Murray at Titcom, and already Sakai is knocking on the door, and that is it. Blood in the water, chomp, chomp, chomp. Sakai takes down the 2012 Labor Day Club Championships. They beat Bravo 15-11. Offense pretty easy at that point. You can see the Bravo players are gassed. Nice to see Mike Caldwell scoring the game winner. Scored the last two goals for Sakai. Yeah, great showing from both teams. As we've said, really proving themselves at the national circuit. Johnny Bravo, been highly ranked all season, and they delivered as they expected to. Sakai, surprising some of the teams maybe this year, but they get themselves back into the talk of Sarasota. What a great tournament it's been. We've had a lot of fun covering all these games. I'll be interested to see what the uh, USA Ultimate rankings are after this weekend. <coughs> Double wide with some impressive victories. Chain didn't make it to semis. Rhino doesn't make it to semis. Ironside out of action this weekend. Of course, they played Chesapeake last weekend. Bravo holding seed. Sakai kind of going from fourth in the A pool, being the number one seed coming out of it. And they just looked fresh in the finals. We're excited to see what happens coming into the series. Next Gen Network will be in Sarasota to bring you all the action of the club finals. We will probably be here with cameraman Brian Bedord and Aki Odera. Director Vin Bowie, replay operator Kimber Coles, that executive producer. Kevin Minderhout. Kevin Minderhout. Can't go everyone's favorite dad. <laughs> I am Topher Davis. I'm Jackson Kelsey. Until Sarasota next or er, Ultimate Community. Thanks for watching. <laughs>